Hey everybody, welcome back. Wherever you are on the Mississippi Gulf Coast today, I hope you have a great day and I hope you're having a great summer. Today we're continuing to look at the book of Isaiah. Throughout the book, God has been dealing with the rebellion of his kids. This isn't just about their rebellion. These stories teach us a lot about our own rebellion. By the time you get to chapters 49 to 55, God is preparing to take the next step and the most important step in dealing with man's sin. From the beginning, God has been working to solve this problem. In Genesis, God sent men to confront and lead his people when they got out of line. He sent men like Abraham and Moses and Joseph. But by the end of that book, it becomes really clear There is no man who can save God's people. In the book of Judges, we saw that God sent judges to correct and lead his people when they got out of line. But by the end of that book, one thing is clear. No judge can truly save God's people. In the books of Samuel and 1st and 2nd Kings and 1st and 2nd Chronicles, we're introduced to the kings of Israel At this point in their history, God used kings to confront and lead his people. But by the end of these books, one thing is clear. No king can save God's people. Throughout the prophets, you discover that no prophet can save God's people. But what the prophets can do is they can tell us about the one who will come that can save God's people. From chapters 49 to 55, Isaiah is prophesying about the coming of Jesus. Jesus doesn't come as a man of power. Instead, he comes as a humble servant. In chapter 50, he deals with man's sin and he models a life of obedience. In chapter 51, we're told that he will bring everlasting salvation to God's people. And he does it. According to the end of chapter 51, chapter 52, and chapter 53, he does that by consuming God's wrath for us. I want you to listen to Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 7, some of the most powerful words you will ever read about Jesus. Surely he took up our pain and he bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. That was written somewhere between 400 and 700 years before the time of Christ, and yet it describes perfectly who Jesus was and what he would do for his people. I pray that you will love him and that you will trust him as the one who came to deal with your sins and to lead your life.